This is 7 News at 4.30. And first at 4.30, a Lawrence neighborhood rocked after three buildings are destroyed by a massive fire there. And there are still lots of questions after that blaze. The investigation focusing now on an unoccupied building. 7's Victoria Warren with the latest now from the scene. Intense flames, intense fear, and then tears of relief. I was going crazy because she has my niece, my nephew, and they're my life. We just run. The police came in, they knocked the door. So we here, thank God. Everyone accounted for after this six alarm fire in Lawrence. This woman was on the third floor. Her four year old son sound asleep. We were sleeping and I we heard I heard the crackles, woke up and when I looked out the window it was just so red and just go ran through the front. This is where the fire started. It was an under construction duplex where no one was living. Then the fire jumped to this triple decker and a garage. Five other buildings were in harm's way. Neighbors hopelessly watching their siding melt as firefighters worked hard to get things under control. We were thinking that we might lose everything that we worked so hard just to get. Excellent stop, believe it or not, because we kept it to just the two buildings. Our guys got on it really fast, um, and at this moment, we everyone's safe and accounted for. The Red Cross helping three families who lost everything except what matters most. Oh, I'm thankful. I mean, everything else could be replaced except for life. State police arson investigators looking at the scene. This fire is being called suspicious because where it started was a vacant building that was under construction. It didn't have any utilities to it, no gas, no electric, and for some reason, flames broke out at 4 a.m. In Lawrence, Victoria Warren, 7 News. Also today, a volunteer firefighter in Bolton is cuffed and in custody today, now charged with robbing a Lancaster gas station at gunpoint. Police arrested Michael Sowa arrest and charged him with masked armed robbery, larceny, and assault with a dangerous weapon. This surveillance video shows a masked man pointing gun at the worker last month before taking off with more than $1,000. Sawa is also charged with armed robbery in Marlboro. He is being held now without bail. A Revere veteran's stolen motorcycle has now been located. Located. Salem police recovered the bike after it was taken from a U.S. Army sergeant's home last week. It has since been returned to the rightful owner. Also on 7, a federal appeals court ruling that the NSA's controversial bulk collection of phone records disclosed by Edward Snowden is illegal. The appeals court is asking Congress to clarify the balance between national security and personal privacy. President Obama has already said he wants phone companies and not the NSA to store that data. Steve Handelsman has the latest from D.C. The decision declares the mass collection of phone data by the NSA illegal because Congress did not authorize it. The unanimous appeals court ruling is a win for Americans' privacy, says the ACLU. In a democratic country, you're supposed to have suspicion first before you have a search. Uh, and the NSA was essentially reversing that and putting the search first. Revealed by Edward Snowden, the program called 215 saves the data from every call in the U.S. Who called who and when? not what was said. So, for example, investigating the attempted jihad attack in Garland, Texas, the feds can go back years and track who the suspects talked to. The U.S. Attorney General says that works. Section 215 has been a vital tool in our national security arsenal. To preserve 215, Senate Republicans would specifically authorize it. We're going to keep America safe. We're not going to let it revert back to where we're susceptible to another 9-11. But many Democrats oppose the program. And in my view, bulk collection has been discredited as a way to preserve our national security. Now Congress has till June to decide. The debate up here is complicated by President Obama's plan backed in the House to have private phone companies keep the data and to have federal agents have to get a warrant to see it. I'm Steve Handels in NBC News, Capitol Hill. We have some new details now into the terror shooting in Texas. Federal investigators say one of the gunmen who opened fire on a police officer had been in contact with at least two known ISIS sympathizers. Elton Simpson had established a social media trail before the shooting. It connects him with a British hacker turned ISIS recruiter and another known ISIS sympathizer. There's no doubt that the Islamic State inspired this attack, and they are actively trying to inspire attacks. They are telling Westerners in Western Europe or North America, stay home, attack your homeland. Family members say they had no idea the man had been radicalized. The 63-year-old woman who's been referred to as a serial stowaway has allegedly tried yet again 
to board a flight without a ticket. Marilyn Hartman has repeatedly tried to board flights without a ticket, photo ID at several airports across the country. In fact, we've talked about her seeing this face many times now. According to police reports, Hartman has tried again in Chicago, arrested three times in two weeks. Why has the government allowed me to get past security points until I forced the issue back in February and pretty much had to beg to be arrested? So it seems like she's trying to make a point here, obviously. Hartman now faces misdemeanor charges. The American Civil Liberties Union of Colorado is defending two black men who were pulled over by police, removed from their car, and searched. The incident which the ACLU describes as racial profiling was all caught on camera. You see this? Oh. Excessive force and ha putting handcuffs were pulled over for no reason. According to the Colorado Springs Police Report, police pulled the car over for a cracked windshield. During the video, officers never answer why they stopped the car, something they should have done according to the police manual. That is biased policing. I don't think anyone can watch that video and say with a straight face that that would have happened to two young white men. The passenger who was dragged from the car now faces a criminal charge for interfering with an investigation. Meantime, the police department has launched an internal investigation. Caught on camera, a new video released showing real estate heir Robert Durst urinating on candy in a pharmacy. Disgusting. There he is in the white hat and uh, white shirt. He was picking up a prescription when he suddenly drops his trousers and you know, goes. His lawyer says it was a medical mishap. As he was just released from the hospital, the DA allowed him to plead no contest to a lesser charge. Durst is currently in jail, though, in Louisiana on a murder and firearms charge. I think you're going to like this story a little more. A marriage proposal at the finish line of the Pittsburgh Marathon cut short by security. But not for any reason you might think here. All right, so didn't completely ruin the moment here, and a couple is now sharing their story after a romantic gesture ends abruptly. It was supposed to be their big moment. I was so excited coming to the finish line because it was the end of the half. Veronica Carter and Brian Peterson had just finished the Pittsburgh Half Marathon, and Brian had big plans. Grabs my face in his hands, and he said that um, how hard he worked to finish that race was how hard he was going to work for us. I thought no matter what, I'm getting down on my knee. I'm doing it. What's that guy doing standing right there? Not so fast. Before Brian could propose, Marathon Security interrupted the moment, pushing them away from the finish line. I was angry. They didn't ruin it, but they postponed the moment. They definitely de-romanticized it for a little while. They didn't even know their moment was caught on camera until it was shown to them. <laughs> But not for long, just a few yards away, Brian was finally able to get down on one knee and slide that diamond ring on Veronica's finger. Brian had envisioned this moment for the four months he trained for the half marathon, and even though it didn't go exactly how he planned, Veronica said she wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't have it any other way because it's a great story. <laughs> And they're all smiles. That's all that matters, right? Peterson says that security guard congratulated him, but still kept telling them to move along. <laughs> well, Whole Foods appears to be shopping for new customers. The company says new stores will be smaller than current stores with lower-priced organic and natural food for younger, bargain-conscious shoppers. The stores will open next year, but executives declined to give details about where and how many. Whole Foods currently has more than 400 stores in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Well, McDonald's is testing two breakfast bowls in Southern California. California, one of which has kale in it. The McDonald's rep says kale is included in a turkey sausage and egg white bowl, which also contains spinach and bruschetta. McDonald's is testing a variety of new food products as part of its turnaround plan following months of sliding sales. A Japanese zoo is saying sorry after getting into a little monkey business involving the royal baby. The zoo says some angry calls came in after it named a baby monkey Charlotte. <laughs> As the uh, as in the newborn princess, British princess, the manager says, while it uh, went to the public to vote on it, he is reconsidering the name of the animal. I think it's just coincidence. Yeah, I mean, and if not, I mean, it's harmless. They weren't poking fun at the new right. princess, of course. Right. It's a cute monkey. I mean, we'll, see. well, still ahead on seven news at 4:30, a brutal attack. Two men eating dinner inside a New York restaurant, violently assaulted with a chair. My police say this may have been a hate crime. Plus, are you done keeping up with the Kardashians? Well, there's now an app for that. How you can live your life without 
Kim or Courtney. And new at five, we're continuing to track the latest developments from the Deflategate report. Even local politicians are weighing in on the controversy. Plus, a former Celtic star taking a tumble on live TV. Ooh, that's Shaq going viral after this epic fall during the NBA playoffs. Coming up on Seven News. A brutal attack all caught on camera. Two men eating together inside a New York restaurant assaulted. Wow, look at that video. Police say the suspects took off before police got there. And tonight, investigators are treating this attack as a possible hate crime. It was just after 11 p.m. when tempers flared inside the Dallas barbecue in New York, culminating with this shocking act of violence. In the video, you see the suspect grab a chair and strike one of two victims over the head with it. In all my years, I had never seen anything like that. I'd never seen somebody crack. I mean, like, you can hear the wood break, like, that heavy, thick wood break upside this man's head. And I was just still kind of like, Isam Sheriff was just a few feet away taking this video with his cell phone. He says he's never seen anything like this. Two male victims were eating together when they had a verbal disagreement with a third guy, possibly over a drink that was knocked over. And then it quickly escalated into this. You see the bearded suspect in the black jacket and white shirt violently push one victim to the ground, and then it appears he is stomping on him. He was on the floor being stomped, like he was stomping to kill. Like, it was violently dangerous. It was out of control to even see it. Other restaurant patrons were trying to break it up, but fists and feet were flying, and then the chair was in the air. Police say this is being investigated as a possible hate crime. Police say that one of the victims lost a tooth and had cartilage in his ear snapped as a result of that attack. Coming up, looking to improve your memory? Researchers say your diet could be the key. Mmm, avocados. Always good. <laughs> Our forecast is looking a little bit uh, cooler over the next couple of days. I hope you're prepared for it. Details next. Coming up here, new at five, backing Brady, one of the Pats QB's favorite receivers coming to his defense online. Plus, Adam Levine sings about sugar. Now he's covered in it. The pop star attacked while appearing on a late night talk show. All right, it's Throwback Thursday, and Mother's Day is this weekend, as you know. Yeah, so hopefully you know anyway. If you don't, now you can go out and buy something. And we're showing some <laughs> throwback pictures with our moms. And we start with meteorologist Bree Eggers. That's Bree on the left side of the picture with her mom, all dressed up with a nice bonnet. Oh. <laughs> up next, you can tell which future 7 News anchor this is with his mom, perhaps. Here's a hint. He just recently got married. That is Ryan Schulteis. That's his beautiful mother, Jody. I know both of them well. Great people. And uh, throwing it all the way back to his wedding from last mm -hmm. month. That was the picture with Ryan and his mother. Well, let's try and guess which reporter this is. Here's a hint. We're looking for the name of the baby on the right, not the name of that big lobster on the left. Obviously, we don't have a lobster <laughs> reporting for us, but it's Jennifer Egan. Jen says her parents celebrated the birth with a lobster as big as her. Look at that thing, it's huge. Wow, I am in deep doo-doo. Why? Well, the request from our producers came last week. I was out last week. Um, so you didn't I, send I didn't send in a picture. My mom's probably watching right now. She's Disappointed like, and crying. Mine? Yeah. You're going to have to make it. He's going to have to make it up. She's to getting you. a good brunch on Sunday though. Okay, well that's so, good. We'll see. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to talk about your forecast now, Pete. We did. And in today's healthcast, the new study shows large differences between hospitals in the mortality rates for extremely premature infants. Researchers found rates of active treatment for the infants varied widely among 24 highly advanced teaching hospitals. At 22 weeks, some hospitals did not actively treat any of the infants, while others treated all of them. Experts say it's because hospitals have varying policies regarding initiating treatment. 
And another reason why you might want to adopt healthy eating habits, a study found that people with a diet full of fruits and veggies, nuts and fish, have a lower risk for memory and thinking decline. Researchers say a group with a healthy diet had about a 4% less cognitive decline than a group with an unhealthy diet. Well, it's a modern family feud between actress Sofia Vergara and her ex-fiance over their two frozen embryos. Vergara told a Good Morning America today that her ex is an opportunist, bringing their private lives into the public eye for attention. But he tells CNN he's speaking out because it's a moral and ethical issue. He says he wants to bring the children into the world. This was very, very important to me. You know, to the point where when we thought we one of you know when we created these lives, and we were going to put them into a surrogate, we were coming up with names for our children. And so to do anything besides continue their journey towards life and through birth, you know, to me is tantamount to destruction. Vergara says he must abide by court documents they signed that say they both must consent to bring the embryos to term. Well, a royal fan sealing a kiss from His Royal Highness Prince Harry, but the fan didn't stop there. It's having the buzz. Have you ever wanted to kiss Prince Harry? Every day, of course. <laughs> That's exactly what one Australian woman did. So here she is, stealing a kiss from the prince as he was saying goodbye to Sydney today. Wow, look at her laughing and smiling. The woman also held a sign asking him to marry her. Thumbs up there. Prince Harry politely requested time to think about that proposal. Hopefully he gets back to her. Well, some people just don't want to keep up with the Kardashians. A new online tool called Card Block will allow people to block any mentions of Kim and her family from their browsers. The program is still being tested as creators say their next project is to block Justin Bieber. That'd be a Bieber block. <laughs> Bieber blockage there. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan getting into more trouble and maybe heading back to jail. This is not a, a, a repeated newscast or broken record here. It's true. The actress is nowhere near completing her service hours due on May 28th. She's supposed to have completed 125 hours, but has only done 20. Hmm. Because of that, a California prosecutor wants her arrested as soon as she returns to the U.S. from London. And she's doing community service from some, uh, some prior incidents. Too many to count, I think. <laughs> not enough hands. Well, much more to come in the next 90 minutes. I'm Elizabeth Nareka. I'm Adam Williams. Join Kim Casey and me for 7 News at 5 starting right now.